Welcome everyone. This is Joseph Nelson, and this is my YouTube channel, Next Home Network PDX. If this is your first time to my channel, and you want to know everything about living, eating, sleeping, all the varied lifestyles that are available to the Portland, Vancouver area, then hit the subscribe button and also ring the little bell so that you will be informed every time I make a new video. I get so many people calling who are looking to relocate to the area and I absolutely love it. If you are thinking of relocating to this area or just need help figuring out where you want to live that fits your lifestyle, then give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, or even send me that carrier pigeon. However you want to get a hold of me, just know that I have your back when moving to the Portland, Vancouver, greater area. And now to our featured story. This video is about home buyer reality. I am going to outline the urgency for first time home buyers to make decisions that do not involve emotion, but rather logic. I am making the case for buying your first home in an area you can afford and not your first choice on where you really want to live. You say you want to live in Lake Oswego, West Lynn, Beaverton, Tigard, other areas that are typically more expensive, and you're waiting for the home you can buy that you can afford in one of these areas. And I'm here to tell you, if you cannot afford a home in these areas right now, I don't believe it's going to change. I can tell you right now, the homes in these areas, the median home price for a three bedroom, two bath home is $425,000. Home prices are going up 10% a year in most areas. And in the areas that have been cheaper, like Sandy, um, Vancouver, these areas are going up more like 15% a year because they've been such a good value compared to the rest of the Portland area and people were willing to travel a little bit to get that extra value. Now those prices are coming up higher and we're to a point where we're gonna to have to start reaching out even further to find the prices in the range that we can afford. Now I am getting a little bit ahead of myself. If you combine this with the fact that interest rates have nowhere to go but up, this is going to be the perfect storm of you not being able to afford your first home more in the future than right now. I'd like to give you a quick example. I'm in contract right now with a client who works at the Portland School District, and he was pre-approved for $225,000. There's nothing available for him in the Portland area. You can say, well, you can get a condo for two twenty-five. dollars True, but you're also looking at two to $500 a month in HOA fees. And so that puts your buying power to the point where you can't even buy a condo. Please understand, folks, these first-time homebuyer loans, whether they're USDA or FHA, which are the two primary vehicles for financing for first-time homebuyers, well, in addition to VA, if, that, if you qualify for that, that's the best. But please understand that these are low or no down payment loans and because of this, the condition of these homes are gonna to have to be at a higher standard because of the low down payment as opposed to a conventional, which has more lax home condition lending standards because you're putting 20% down. So this is another limiting factor in searching for your home. It not only needs to be in your price range, it needs to be in the condition that's financeable with a low down payment. Another thing to be cautious of is looking at homes over your budget price. Right now, homes on the average are selling for more than their asking price. So if you are looking for a home with a 275 budget and you're looking at a listing for 300, this is another area where you are setting yourself up for disappointment and failure. We need to be realistic about what's happening in the market and what your budget is. 
Then you tell me, you've got to have a three bedroom or you need to have a four bedroom. Four bedroom homes are far and few between. If you are looking to buy your first home and you have say $300,000 in budget and there's 10 homes in your area that are available at 300,000, there might be one or zero that have four bedrooms. So you are cutting down your chances even further. Here is where I'm asking you to make a change in your mindset. Why not look at two bedroom homes? There is less competition for those. And really it's more important for you to get into the market so that you ride the market instead of getting further away from the market by waiting. I am telling you, if you wait out the market, you are going to get further away from your dream of owning a home. It's time you adjust your mindset to buy the home you can afford and not dream about the home you'd like to have. So now let's talk about how you're going to search for your home. Which website, which app on your phone should you use? Zillow is one of the worst places to look for listings. It's been my experience that they really don't care that their listings are up to date because they sell leads to realtors for thousands of dollars a month. Zillow really doesn't care whether the interest in the homes that produce leads are still on the market or not because their goal is to sell as many leads as they can to realtors. I'm going to tell you by far, in my opinion, the best app or the best computer-based program to use for searching for your home is HomeSnap. And you may ask, why do they call it HomeSnap? Well, I'll tell you, because in the app, you can take a snap of the house, a picture, and get all of the information that you're used to getting from Zillow or Trulia or any of the other websites directly to your phone. And it is totally up to date. HomeSnap is owned by the realtors. And it is our desire to put out information to consumers that is up to date, totally up to date. It is updated, I hear, every 15 minutes. If you look up listings that are available, then they are available. You may come back and look at that listing again tomorrow or an hour from now, and it says in contract. It is that quick. We may have fewer listings on HomeSnap than Zillow, but that's because the listings that are there are actually current and they're not flooded with old broken down leads. Here in the near future, I am going to make a video specifically outlining the features of HomeSnap. But for now, just know you need to send me a message or an email and tell me you want me to connect you to my HomeSnap app. In order to get HomeSnap, I need to send you an invite. And after I send you an invite, you accept the invitation and we are joined at the hip for communicating, for looking at homes, for, hey, this one looks great. And I can respond right back and give you feedback as to whether it's financeable or not. All the stuff you need to know. Okay, let's wrap this up with some encouragement. The young man that I got into contract for $175,000, he came into town, we got him pre-approved, and within one week, his first offer I got him into contract and he told me before he's heard horror stories of making 10 offers and never having one accepted. And I can understand how that can happen, but you need to allow me to position you for success. Remember, if you're looking for that perfect place to live in the Portland, Vancouver area, you've got to call me or text me or email me, or even send me that carrier pigeon. However you want to contact me, just know I have your back when moving to the Portland, Vancouver, greater area. And until the next video, I'll catch you later.